PPI data showed more signs of inflation monitoring. S&P 500 and NASDAQ both logging a fourth day of straight gains there. For more on the latest market moves, we have Steve Sosnick, Interactive Brokers Chief Strategist. Steve, always great to have you live in studio. Great to see you, of course, in studio, Josh. Uh, this day, interesting. We had a few different cross currents. So we had the economic data this morning, yeah. PPI and some jobless claims. Let me, another one I did want to touch on with you today, we're talking about earlier in the show, Nick Timrose out with a story in the journal. You read Nick very closely because Nick at this point is like, he's like a shadow member of the yes. FOMC to me and that's how smart and well sourced Nick is. And Nick is talking about next week in this debate, there's gonna be 25, there's gonna be a 50. And Nick's saying here, new piece, how much is shaping up to be a close call? What do you make of that? I think it's fascinating because to me, I really think it's close. I don't see why they wouldn't do 25. Um, so I think the fact that he's saying it's a close call puts the odds a little bit greater toward 50, more toward 50 than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. As I'm looking at the numbers, you know, Chairman Powell reminded us at Jackson Hole that there, we should start focusing on the dual mandate again. Mm -hmm. You know, stable prices, yes, we've been focused on that for, for however many years now. Maximum employment, we can kind of put that aside because it was fine. Now we have to start paying attention to it again. Well, the employment numbers are definitely, they're, they're squishy, they're not terrible yet. But you know, when you talk about it, it's still a 4.2 unemployment rate is not terrible. Also, labor costs went up in the payrolls report and they mm -hmm. went up in the CPI report. So you're still getting, a, that's not telling me that labor is falling off a cliff. If people are getting paid more, it's not as disastrous as, you know, the labor market it deserves watching. And also the Fed doesn't like surprises. And so we'd gotten down to a, you know, we'd, we'd gotten to a 50-50, you know, in terms of 50 versus 25. We kind of came back to about 15, 20%. The Fed doesn't typically like to surprise markets, but... You know, he's a, Nick Timoros is a Fed whisperer, so I, I have to wonder what's up. <laughs> yes. You know, also right. remember, you can get accused of politics if you do too much, mm -hmm. you know, this right. far before the election. So That's a good point. There's yeah. a lot going Lots on. Lots to consider. Um, you had wrote a note uh, yesterday where you talked about how um, the Jensen Wong effect had hit the market <laughs> with him making some comments at a Goldman Sachs conference um, indicating that demand was still strong for the company's chips. And that sort of helped salvage big tech in particular. Going into these next several weeks, and we asked another guest to this today as well, after the Fed cuts, however much it cuts, then what? Does the, is the focus just go to the next, the next meeting? Or do we refocus on earnings, do the election? Kind of, how do you think that balance shifts? A little bit of all of it, Julie, mm -hmm. to some extent. I mean, th to me, th we still have to get through the other part of the Fed meeting, which is the dot plot. And I think we're, we're so focused on the 25 versus 50 debate, the will they, won't they kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's like a, a, a rom-com or something. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the other thing that's, that's out there is the Fed puts out the summary of economic projections. We call it the dot plot because it looks, you know, a bunch of dots on a plot, literally. Um, and the market, remember, has been ahead of the Fed for, for almost two years now, I actually wrote about this in August, that, that August of 22, we were disappointed at Jackson Hole because they didn't announce a pivot. Meanwhile, they just kept raising rates. So we're going to find out if, if we actually are going to get 1% one, one one or more rate cuts for the end of 24 and 2.5% 2 .2 rate cuts for the end of 25. So that will, that will start another round of Fed mm. debates pretty much within microseconds of the Fed decision. So that's part one. Yes, the earn and earnings, of course, you can never escape earnings. And that's the, those are always crucially important because bottom line is that's what the, that's what the stock market hinges upon. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the election is there. But I really don't think that, that that's been a huge market factor so far. It's certainly been something on the forefront of everybody's mind news-wise. But it hasn't, I don't think we've seen a lot of overt bets in the market outside of a few very specific names and sectors.